Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Anna if you're new here. Today I'm doing my February favourites, which feels like I just did my January favourites. I know February is obviously a shorter month, so it always feels like it goes fast, but this year was like particularly bad because I went away in the very middle for about 10 days and I feel as if that contributed to why this month felt like it flew by. But even though this month has felt short, I have a huge favourites list this month. I'm not quite sure why. I did try quite a few new things, so I've got some stuff to talk about, but also like lifestyle -y things. I have a lot to say. So my first favourite of the month is a skincare product that I took away with me on my trip to New Zealand. It's a sunscreen, and you guys know, you know that I love, love my Purito unscented sunscreen, but that one had nearly run out before I went away, so I thought I'd take a different one with me because I didn't want to risk running out of sunscreen while I was there. So I took my Can Make Tokyo Mermaid Skin Gel SPF 50 with me and I kind of fell back in love with it. I have to say that I think I do prefer actually the texture of this one to the Purito. It is very much more like a gel, so I think for my more sort of normal to oily skin, having a bit more of a gel texture is really, really nice. Um, the only reason I probably still like the Purito one a bit more is that it contains 100% like reef safe ingredients whereas I'm pretty sure from memory this one does contain an ingredient that isn't great for the reefs. Otherwise it is literally a perfect product and I do love that it's also really affordable as well. You can grab this one on Yes Style. My next favourite is actually a cream blush so I'm just popping in with my base makeup before I put cream blush on and I'm still loving this Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer as well as my Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Foundation. This stuff's so good. I'm really starting to run low on it as well which is a shame. I'll have to order a new one. Um, I wear the shade 095 Fair Porcelain which you can't actually buy in Australia but I found that you can get it on feelunique.com so if you're very fair like me and you're wanting that shade but you're based in Australia, that's where I would get it from. I'm very tempted to pick up another tube because I think I will actually finish this within like a month, which is quite amazing for me. But this was a favourite from January, so I feel as if it's not an official February favourite. It's just like a starting to verge into like forever favourite. Could make an appearance in the 2020 Anna Awards. Stay tuned. <laughs> also still loving my Chanel Cream Bronzer. Just chuck on a little bit of powder. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, for those wondering. Okay, now we're up to blush. I actually have two cream blushes to talk about, which makes it very difficult because I cannot apply both, but I'll make that decision in a second. Um, the first one is the L'Oreal Infallible Stick Blush in Sexy Flush. This is the shade 001. I took this away with me traveling and wore this about 9 out of the 10 days I was there. I think I wore my Clinique blush once because that was the other one I took. So this definitely featured the most on my face. I just love the color. It's a really really true like soft baby pink and the color is perfect for my skin tone. It's very very subtle so I feel like you do have to actually use quite a bit of product to get it to show up but I quite like that because I feel like sometimes with blush it's very easy to overdo it. My other favorite this month has been this little Mecca Cosmetica Weekend Skin Duo and this comes with a really nice um, blush on this side. This is more pigmented so it's the kind that you do have to be a little bit more careful with but I love the dewiness of this one. So they're a little bit different. It's the reason I couldn't pick between them. The Infallible Stick blush is great if you have more oily skin I think because um, it really really sticks around. It doesn't go powdery on the skin but it certainly doesn't stay looking dewy and kind of tacky throughout the day. So if you want something that sets a little bit more highly recommend this. I think I will actually apply this stick one since I applied the Mecca Cosmetica one in my five minute makeup routine video that I did earlier in the month. But a little tip is to use a sponge to apply it. So apply it directly onto the end of your sponge and dab it into the skin this way. If you swipe it on and try to blend it there, it's just too much of a sort of stiff formula that I feel like it doesn't blend very well. So you definitely want to apply it onto a sponge and then onto your cheek. And if you do that and you build it up slowly, you'll be left with the most beautiful flush that just lasts and lasts and lasts. Like it's really, really lovely. Um, I think if you have deeper skin than me, you're going to really struggle with this colour showing up because it is very fair. It works for me. So if you're fair like me, which I'm sure quite a few of you actually are but since a lot of my content um, for a long time was very geared towards fair complexions. I think you'll love this one. They do have other colours too, so maybe if you're a bit darker you might like another shade, but oh, 
It's so, so nice. But this other little one, the Mecca Cosmetica Weekend Skin, I have been loving this for more sort of like really, really, really natural, no makeup makeup kind of looks because it's very dewy. So when I don't need my makeup to necessarily stick around for like 12 hours, if I'm just finding areas and I just wanna go do do do, I can just pop it on my cheeks. You can even wear this one on your lips because it is creamier and it doesn't dry down. I find sometimes using cream blushes and stuff on your lips, if it's a bit more of a stiffer formula, they can look really chalky. But this one does apply quite nicely on the lips too. So yes, I've really been loving those two cream blushes. I'm not even going to bother with highlight today because my skin's still looking very dewy. But I'm going to pop on my brow products and then we'll talk eyeshadow. I'm still loving my Marcel Perfect Brow. And for very natural makeup days, like while I was on holiday, I pretty much just wore this alone. I didn't even bother using any other kind of product to fill them in. But today I think I will just add a little bit of pomade just to this out a little bit to get them, get them a little bit stronger. This is the Chi Chi Brow Pomade in the shade Taupe. It's very, 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 very similar to the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. It's a great little Australian dupe. And I'm just popping a little bit of a neutral crease colour through the crease. <laughs> So this next product is one that I wore through a lot of my videos over the last kind of six weeks or so. When I was doing that series on makeup that's like leaving my collection, final reviews, I filmed them all on the same day. So I was wearing like the same eye makeup obviously in every video. And I've never had so many questions from you guys being like, what is on your eyes? <laughs> it was this little bad boy. It's the Technic Mousse Eyeshadow Cream in the shade Blondie. I must say I've already thrashed it. Like you can see the packaging is starting to disintegrate, the writing's coming coming off, little clasp is starting to break. Just like their highlighter that I love, the packaging is not very good. It's the one thing I kind of wish they'd just increase the quality of the packaging. I'd happily pay more for the products because they're great. So packaging aside, the actual product is beautiful. It's a real true sort of cream to powder sort of eyeshadow. It reminds me a lot of the ColourPop Super Shock shadows. It's got that kind of texture. And this is just such a beautiful, champagne it's really nice and fair so it doesn't look too sort of muddy sometimes champagnes can lean a little too dark um but this is beautiful and i actually love using this as a highlight as well i might even put just like a little bit here for you guys so you can kind of see what it looks like as a face highlighter so i certainly don't need any on my cheeks but we can do a little bit on my cupid's bow and it's just it's really subtle on the face it's really pretty um, but yeah, great little one for the lids just to whip over um, for an everyday look. And then I'm just going to use my pinky to put a little bit in my inner corner as well. Do you guys remember those Maybelline like bouncy blushes? That's kind of the texture this has. Like you can push it and the product kind of moves around. It's only a couple of dollars as well on Boohoo, so it's such a steal. My only complaint about it is the packaging. But maybe if you don't travel with it, because it was in pretty good condition before I put it in my travel makeup bag and was pulling it out every day. Obviously got a wee bit bashed up with that, so not a good one to travel with, but very beautiful just to keep in your like everyday makeup drawer. That's what I was wearing on my lids a lot of the month, so very happy. Marcel mascara, nothing new, still amazing. So I've just put on a little bit of the NYX Lavender and Lace lip liner that I've been loving as well for the last couple of months. But my next February favourite is a new lippy that I picked up this month. So I took back 12 MAC empties <laughs> this month to store to claim my two free lipsticks. And one of them that I picked up was this nude colour called Act Natural. Um, I wanted something that was a little bit more nude nude than back blankety something that was a little bit grazy and I actually asked on Instagram for a bunch of your recommendations I got so many a lot of them were ones I've actually tried and loved in the past um, but I really wanted to try something new so I picked this one up and this is very very dead looking <laughs> on the lips if you don't wear a lip liner so that's why I put on a little bit of a lip liner a mauve works really nicely because it is that little bit more of a cool toned kind of grazy color but I just think the combination of the two looks so nice and I think particularly when I have a bit more of a bolder eye look I think it looks a little bit better because it is that true kind of flat nude but I, I'm really really enjoying it. I actually wore it to the wedding in New Zealand and I just thought it looked really really good with the makeup that I was wearing. I had quite a nice kind of matte brown sort of smoky eye so it was quite dramatic on the eyes and then this nude lip was just very 
unoffensive basically. It is one of their matte formulas so it is a little bit drying. I would recommend wearing a lip balm underneath which I already had on my lips. Just so it applies really nice and smoothly and doesn't dry your lips out throughout the day. But um, really really happy with that colour. I also got another one, I think it's called Love You Back or something like that. Um, it's very similar to MAC Blankety but again it's a matte formula. Um, but the colour is very 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 similar so I'm quite excited to give that one a good go over the next few while as well. And then my final makeup favourite is a setting spray which is quite rare. I don't think I ever really mention new setting sprays as like favourites. But this one kind of caught me off guard. It's by L'Oreal. It's their Shake and Glow Luminous Setting Spray. And I got given this by L'Oreal last year when I did some work for them for their YouTube channel. Um, I did a couple of tutorials and this was just one of the products I was using for it. And I really, really like it. It has the most amazing sprayer on it. I think that's why I love it most. The sprayer, the packaging is fantastic. It has a really long continuous mist. So you can actually go like this and it will spray your whole face. You don't have to apply like 10 million sprays. And I do find the formula actually does help to both prolong the wear of my makeup, but also not dry my skin out incredibly. It does have a little bit of alcohol in it which I think is how it actually does manage to, you know, make your makeup last longer. But it also is infused with a lot of nice hydrating ingredients to kind of counteract the dryness of the alcohol. Therefore, I don't find it to be incredibly drying like some other setting sprays I've used in the past. Very, very subtle alcoholic scent. So you can certainly tell that there isn't like a shed load of alcohol in this, unlike some setting sprays I've used where you literally spray it on and you feel like you are drunk. I'm going to spray it and hopefully be able to see the effect of how amazing this packaging is. Look how long it is! I can literally do my whole face. It's amazing. I am thrilled and I'm also stoked that this is drugstore because it's really, really affordable and accessible and I think they've made a great product. So yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Righty, so moving on to more lifestyle favorites. So the first one is kind of a beauty favorite. It is my new fragrance. So I talked recently in a video about how I was really, really wanting to get the Le Labo Santal 33 perfume and I went in to look at it and like sprayed it on I thought yep that's the one I want to get I'm obsessed with the fragrance and then I saw the price and a 100ml bottle was literally $420 and I was like what? <laughs> that is so expensive and even the 50ml was like 280 which is a lot for a 50ml bottle of fragrance so I didn't get it and thankfully a couple of you guys recommended a few dupes for it so I've got a few that I'm keen to try the first one though that I'm gonna work my way through is this one by Maison Louis Marie and this is actually a perfume oil so yes it is teeny and tiny and it is only 15 mils but it's a very strongly concentrated perfume oil this is the scent number four Bois de Bellicor I believe that's how you pronounce it I looked it up it's very hard to find a correct French pronunciation of this name Bois de Bellicor is the best I could come up with but anyway sounds very bougie um, I love the packaging I think it looks so chic minimalist very like Parisian. It was great for traveling because it's so teeny tiny. They do though make this fragrance in an actual Eau de Parfum as well, like a big spray. But I think that one was still about $160 for a 50 ml. So it's not a cheap perfume, but it was just a little bit more affordable than the Le Labo. This fragrance oil in Australia was $89 um, and I paid $10 for shipping from Maple Store as I believe where I bought it online. So it cost me a hundred bucks. But I'm really happy with it. It is pretty much the exact same fragrance as Le Labo's Santal 33. I can't really tell much of a difference except that I think this one might just be like a fraction more feminine. I do think this one maybe isn't quite as strong. I do feel like the Le Labo one stayed on my skin. Well the, the sample that I sprayed in store I felt like that lasted like literally all day and even possibly the next morning I could still kind of smell it. Um, whereas this one I do find is really nice and strongly put it on. Um, after a few hours I do feel like I have to actually like sniff my wrist to really get a whiff of it and it is still there but I usually like to maybe reapply again in the evening if I'm going out. But it is so beautiful. I'll put a little bit behind my ears because then it kind of like throws the scent forward and a little bit on my wrists. It is just so beautiful. It is a very woody kind of unisex sort of scent. So if you love something that's slightly a little bit more masculine and it has that real sandal woody kind of flavor to it, then this is the kind of fragrance for you. There were a couple of other ones that you guys suggested, particularly the Clean Reserve. I can't remember 
or the exact name of that one, had Santal in the fragrance name, but um, I'm probably going to get that one next. You can order clean reserve fragrances from Adore Beauty, so I think I might get that one next. I just was really drawn to the packaging of this and the fact that it's a little perfume oil, so we'll see how we go. I'll probably run out of that one in a couple of months and be able to try out another dupe and let you guys know. My next favourite this month is a little dress that I picked up. It was at the end of January and I was actually wearing it in my January favourites but I was like I can't really include this as a favourite because I literally had just bought it that week. But it is a little green dress from Kukai and originally when I went out shopping for this dress I was after actually more of a longer maybe sort of midi to maxi kind of length dress but with little shooting straps I can wear little t-shirts under as I like to do. I've got my Zimmerman jumpsuit over a t-shirt today. But I spotted this little dress and I was like so in love with the style, I love the colour and even though it does mean that I have to get very comfortable with having my legs out, I feel like it's made me be a little bit more confident because I just love the dress so much I kind of have to just not care what anyone thinks about my legs. My legs have always been my most self-conscious body part and I know many of you are probably like your legs are fine as my husband does, I get it. And they are fine, they're very strong, they can take me places, they work, that's what I should be thankful for but for a few years I literally didn't wear like short dresses or shorts at all like I just wore long kind of loose pants in summer or maxi dresses but recently I've just been like screw it there's so many clothes I want to wear and so many things I don't wear because I'm self-conscious of my legs so this is one of them it's been a good dress to kind of make me get a little bit more comfy with them and I ended up wearing it in New Zealand to the wedding that I went to but I've also been wearing it just like casually again with little t-shirts underneath and with like little sneakers it's just such a great little versatile piece I also love that the outer material is linen and then it's lined with cotton so it's really breathable and so so nice on a hot day even though it is a little bit of a sort of thicker more structured fabric but I am really obsessed with Kukai clothing at the moment it's sort of between that and Cezanne they're like my go-to stores at the moment even though I only have one piece from Cezanne I don't know maybe I shouldn't call that my go-to store but I'm obsessed with everything they stock and I do think I might place an order for one or two new items for my autumn capsule wardrobe because I've had quite a few things sitting on my shop tagger for a while and I'm like I don't want them to sell out in my size so I might have to bite the bullet and do it. They end up being a similar kind of price point I think to Kakai, maybe a touch more expensive uh, but they're, they're kind of a similar kind of store I think. Maybe Cezanne is a little bit better quality but I really like their stuff. Both of them are very much my style at the moment. Quite classic sort of feminine styles with a little point of difference. My next favourite is the necklace that I'm wearing. So you guys know earlier in the month I did some work with Ana Luisa. This video though is not sponsored in any way. I just am really really obsessed with this little necklace that I got. So I think because it's so dainty that's why I've gotten so much wear out of it and I just absolutely love it with like my everyday clothes it's really nice to play violin in because it doesn't you know it's not bulky and doesn't get in the way so it's kind of become the little go-to necklace that I wear when I want to do gold jewelry if I want to wear silver I've got my Tiffany heart necklace as well which is kind of a similar concept a very dainty pendant but I'm so 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 happy with this even though this month was very short I managed to fit in a lot of entertainment <laughs> I watched a lot of movies I read a couple of books and I watched a really intriguing TV show as well I've really been enjoying going to the movies on a Tuesday night because they're only $10 tickets so it's a lot cheaper it's like half the price of a normal ticket and I often enjoy going by myself it's like a nice little self date and it's just something that I've really started enjoying doing in the last few months but this month I managed to see the new remake of Emma I saw the movie Bombshell, I saw Jojo Rabbit with Alex and I also watched Joker and Midway on the plane so when I went to New Zealand I watched Midway and then when I was coming home I watched the new Joker movie. I must say I did really enjoy all five, I'd say Midway was probably my least favourite. It just wasn't quite as good a quality movie as the other ones I'd say. I thought Bombshell was really good. That focuses on the story of the sexual allegations against Roger who was like the head of Fox News. Um, I thought that was a really powerful movie and I think something that women should really see. It made me very uncomfortable at times watching it so I think it really yeah has something to say but probably my favorite movie of the month would have been Jojo Rabbit. Yes it is a comedy about Nazis but it is a very powerful and I think a very important movie for people to see and it makes you watch the whole thing because if you only watch the beginning you're probably gonna get the wrong idea about what it's about um, but it is a very powerful movie, something that I think is very relevant for this day and age. The director Taika Waititi is a Kiwi, so of course we're all very proud. He won an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay, I believe. He's actually acting in the movie as well as Hitler, which is quite 
a bizarre thing to see a Māori Hitler, but he does such a good job at portraying that character and yeah, I just think it is a fantastic movie. It was definitely the best one I saw. I'd probably say um, I also loved the remake of Emma. Emma was never my favourite like Jane Austen book, like uh, I always was very fond of Sense and Sensibility, that was always like my favourite one, followed by like Pride and Prejudice, but this adaptation of Emma was perfect, like it's got Bill Nye in it, who's that guy from Love Actually, you know, I feel it in my fingers, that guy, and he is so brilliant in it. Again, it is a comedy and I feel like there aren't very many like period movies, that kind of 18th century sort of period of movies, there are not many of those that are comedies. So my mum didn't actually know, I took my mum to see it while I was in Christchurch and she was like a wee bit like, oh is this a comedy when it started? And I was like, yep. Yeah, really, really beautiful adaptation and the score was gorgeous, like the music in it was phenomenal. Speaking of which, I watched Joker on the way back from New Zealand and I must say I thought that movie had an exceptional music score, like that's what really made it. That as well as... I'm just going to say Mr. Phoenix's performance because I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his first name. Mr. Phoenix's performance as Joker was phenomenal, like really quite amazing, but the music, the score was incredible. But I'd say definitely Jojo Rabbit, Emma and probably the Joker were my top three. This month I also read two books, Handmaid's Tale, which Alex gave me for my birthday in January, which I really enjoyed. I don't often read novels, I'm a little bit more of a non-fiction girl when it comes to books, they're the kind that I really enjoy reading, but I did love Handmaid's Tale. I thought it was really good. I'm very much keen to read the next one. Is it The Testament? I think that's only just recently come out. Um, which is handy because the ending of Handmaid's Tale is very cliffhangery and I was like well I'd hate to have to wait like 20 years to know what happened so very keen to read The Testament. I've also nearly finished the book called Sapiens which is a very very large and dense non-fiction book all on homo sapien development. It starts right back at the early evolutionary stage of homo sapiens as a species. Um, it goes through the hunter-gatherers, the early sort of agricultural period etc. It goes through history right now and right up into capitalism at the end. Again a very important read. It's made me really question and just think about social constructs and why I think things. For example, beauty standards, it's like really made me question why I do things or why I feel a certain way about things. It's just like allowing me to break down some of those barriers because I sit back and realize, well actually that's a big sort of artificial construct that's been created by society and isn't a law of nature essentially. So <laughs> I found it really fascinating, quite freeing. I will give a little disclaimer, if you are religious in any way, you might find some parts of it quite challenging because the author is very clearly atheist. I'm not an atheist but I was able to look past it and could see a real value in viewing religion in a very sort of matter of fact way. I think it's important to even question your own faith and beliefs and I think that's what this book challenges people to do but um, you might find it incredibly challenging. I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. And then my final favourite for the month is a TV show. <laughs> I told you this was a big video. Uh, I watched on Netflix the mini series called Pandemic. I think it's six episodes. It talks mainly about the idea of a flu pandemic and they go in depth about like the fact that they are starting to develop a universal flu vaccine which should be ready in like a few years time which is pretty exciting. And so yeah, I found it really fascinating. Again, a really good binge watch as well. You are actually at home not well, which is when I watched it, I had a sore throat at the time. And uh, it was both kind of scary to watch when you're ill, but being only six episodes is also a perfect kind of length to watch in a sick day. But yeah, that is pretty much my February favourites in a nutshell. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here, you might not know that I have a blog. It's lifebyarnaelaine.com. You can go over and check it out. I've put up quite a few blog posts this month, including a couple of very delicious recipes. And you can also interact with me in between my videos over on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. In fact, I would highly recommend if you are a Pinterest user, definitely go over and follow my Pinterest. I've been getting very active on there, posting lots of pins, repinning a lot of other pins as well with inspiration and comfort food recipes. That's probably my favourite board that I've done so far. And until my next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and we'll talk soon. Bye!